Welcome to this video on auxiliary classes in Java. My name's Andy Wicks and the code for this program was created by Dr. Chris Walshaw, Dr. Kate Finney and Dr. Don Cowell of the University of Greenwich. Before I get into the theory of what's going on here and the practice, let me show you the program running. We're going to have a look at a little fee calculator. This program is an imaginary program that allows an applicant for the university to enter their family name, in this case Wix, whether they're a home or overseas student, I'm home, and the number of courses that they'd like to take. I'm going to take three. Now I've built a cheat into this program. Being a programmer I can do that. You see, all Wixes are ill-educated and ought to be brought into the educational system. So I've programmed it so that the fees for any Wix are always zero. But if that changed to say Walshaw, poor Chris, being an educated and intelligent chap, would have to pay £1,800. However, if Chris were an overseas student, then that would change to £6,000. Now I can clear all the fields so that the next person coming along can enter their details to see what happens. This program is much easier than it looks, but there is a little twist in the tail. An auxiliary class is a class that has been added to the program at the end. It's the same as the classes that we looked at in an earlier video, but instead of being in its own file and therefore reusable in any other program, this class sits right at the bottom underneath the closing bracket for the program. That closing bracket is the closing bracket for what's above. This class is a separate entity underneath. However, this class cannot be used by other programs, at least not other programs that are outside this package. This class is called Workout Fees and Workout Fees takes a string name, a boolean for saying whether I'm home or not, and the number of courses as an integer. And all these go into a method in workout fees called calc fees, short for calculate fees. Now I've set up some constant integers that are the amount that the student would have to pay for each type of course. If they're a home student they would pay £600. If they're an overseas student, £2,000 and it uses these figures in the calculation and this is where the cheat occurs. If Wix, and ignoring the case, is the same as the name that was entered, then we're going to return 0. Else, if it's a home student, we're going to return the amount of home fees times the number of courses they're taking. If they're not a home student and they're not called Wix then they must be an overseas student. So we look at the overseas fee, multiply that by the number of courses and return that to the calling part of the program. That's all that this class does. It works out the fees and cheats if your name is Wix. So let's see that in action here. That action is performed if the user presses the Submit button. Here's the Submit button being checked. We're looking to see if an event E has its source from Button Submit. If it has, this logic is then performed. So we're going to set up a decimal format called pounds. We're going to set up a string called name that is the text from the 
text field family name. We're going to check whether the home field has been clicked. So the radio button home, is that selected? If it is, then home is true. If it isn't, then home is false. And finally, we're going to go to the text field number of courses, get the text from that, and turn what's in there into an integer. That integer then goes into the variable called courses. That's the number of courses we're taking. We then calculate the amount of fees that the student has to pay. And for that it goes to the cl class workout fees, goes to the method in workout fees called calc fees and sends that the name of the student whether they're home or not and the number of courses that they intend to take. Calc fees works out the fees and it puts that into the fees variable which is then output into the text field using the format that we created above. Let me go through that again, it's fairly complicated. We check whether the submit button has been clicked. If it has, we create a decimal format that is going to show us the fees in a nice format in the text fees field. It does that by getting the family name, finding out whether the home button is selected, and checking on the number of courses that the user decides to enter. Once it's got those pieces of information it goes to the class, this auxiliary class that sits at the bottom of this code called workout fees. In workout fees it uses the method calc fees which needs the uh, parameters name, home and courses. The final section of this code will check what happens if the user presses the clear button. If they press the clear button then the text fields family name, number of courses and text fields are all set to the empty string, in other words they're cleared. <laughs>